Welcome everybody. <laughs> to our guest speakers, Member for Caulfield, David Southwick MP, Marsha Thompson, co-convener, Friends of Israel, Elizabeth Miller MP, Se Secretary Parliamentary, Friends of Israel, and Roe Sadan from Israel, who's arrived in Melbourne after such a long journey around the world. Community members and friends, today we mark five minutes for Gilad Shalit. One minute to mark each of the five years that Gilad has been held captive by Hamas. Totally cut off from the outside world and denied access to all who seek information on his condition. We are here to show our compassion and to raise awareness for Gilad's plight. To send the message that five years in terrorist captivity is five years too long. We want Hamas to give the Shalit family and the world a sign that Gilad is alive. We want Gilad to be allowed the basic right to medical care. But above all, we want Gilad to be free. It is a surreal feeling that five years have passed since we gathered here last at this very same location. Five years ago, we demonstrated our solidarity and our concern for Israel's three kidnapped soldiers. On June 25, 2006, Hamas attacked Gilad Shalit's post at Kerem Shalom. They killed two of Gilad's comrades, wounded five more, and took Gilad hostage. While working to put that solidarity event together, we all learned the terrible news that on July 12, 2006, Israeli soldiers Ehud Goldwasser and Eldad Regev were kidnapped by Hezbollah. The Blue Ribbon Campaign was initiated by the Zionist Council of Victoria as a visual symbol of solidarity. We wore blue ribbons pinned to our clothing as a constant reminder that Gilad, Udi and Eldad were in our thoughts and prayers. We tied blue ribbons to our cars and to our fences at home. The blue ribbons were for three young men whose fates we feared now rested with terrorists. We displayed the blue ribbons as a sign of concern for Gilad, Udi and Eldad. Deep compassion for three families suffering the agony of knowing their sons were now commodities of brutal terrorist regimes who we knew would exploit the kidnappings in the most sickening way. Two years and four days later, the bodies of Ehud Goldwasser, Zichron Olivracha, and Eldad Regev, Zichron Olivracha, were returned to their grief-stricken families in Israel in a complex prisoner <coughs> exchange. And all this time, five years, 1,827 days, Gilad has languished somewhere in a Gaza cell. We know he is not being afforded basic human rights. We know that his Hamas captors are cruel and cynical. It is well documented that they use their own people as human shields and that they indoctrinate their own children to embrace violence and hatred. It has been almost two years since Hamas released a sign that Gilad is alive. In five years, they have released just three letters and two videotapes. Just days ago, the International Red Cross reported that Hamas once again denied their latest requests for a sign of life, refusing as well an IRC visit to monitor Gilad's well-being and contact from the Shalit family. The feeling in our community about Gilad's plight throughout this time has been one of heartfelt compassion. We are worried about Gilad, his health, his state of mind, his fate. We feel the acute pain of his family who have vowed to keep vigil in a tent in Jerusalem until Gilad is free. In 2009, on the third anniversary of Gilad's kidnapping, the ZCV screamed a film, docu a film document documenting the Shalit family's heartbreaking struggle to cope on a daily basis. Since seeing it, I often think about the haunting words of Gilad's parents, his mother, Aviva Shalit. All the terrible things we see in the movies pass through my mind, steel bars, and darkness, she said, her face filled with anguish. And Gilad's father, Noam Shalit, said, I wait for this unbearable nightmare to be over. Please join us now in five minutes of silence for Gilad.
in a meeting with a group of Australians at the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Jerusalem. Halfway through that meeting, a message was received about an incident on the border with Gaza, on Israeli sovereign territory. An Israeli soldier had been kidnapped and two others killed. Later, we learned the names of those killed. Staff Sergeant Pavel Slutske and Lieutenant Hanan Barak, Zichronam Livracha, and that 19-year-old Corporal Gilad Shalit had been kidnapped. It is hard to believe that 1,827 days have now passed since that fateful day. Much has changed for us all in those five years. Some of us finished school or graduated university. Some of us have changed jobs. Others still have gotten married, taken our first steps, brought new life into the world or found new love. We've seen loved ones suffer illness or pass on. But one thing has remained exactly the same. Gilad Shalit is still in Hamas captivity. Just one month after Gilad Shalit was kidnapped, we gathered in almost this very place to put blue ribbons around trees in order, in order to raise awareness for Gilad's plight. Our hope was that Gilad would be returned quickly and safely into the comforting arms of his loving family. I went home that day and placed a blue ribbon around the tree at the front of my parents' place. As the years have gone by and the seasons have changed, the slowly fading ribbons seem to serve as a 